Welcome everybody to a Sporting Life Cheltenham Festival preview with a bit of a difference. Lots to come over the next little while with all sorts of guests, but what a star we've got in the company of Ollie, Graham and Fran. Right boys, we're going to deal with the talking points at the Cheltenham Festival. Ollie, let's start with you. How important for the sport is that we have a really good, a humdinger, if you like, of a Cheltenham Festival? Well, I, I think it's crucial, really. I think that Cheltenham is, is our... I mean, we talk about it a lot on ITV, don't we? It, it is our biggest and best shop window for national hunt racing. And if we can provide the audience, be it new or old, with an experience that they will remember forever, then the hope is that they come back, they engage in the sport. And I think more so perhaps this year in light of a lot of things going on in the world, et cetera, in the racing industry, I think if we can go, actually, there are issues in this industry, but this is when we're at our very best. And I think that could only be a positive for us moving forward uh, in 2024 and beyond. What, why aren't people coming back, it seems, as Ollie refers to there, GC? Yeah, it's an interesting question. It's because winter, cold weather, small fields, betting industry in turmoil, stars injured or worse, scotch eggs being confiscated on the door. There's a lot of downbeat feel. But this is always the meeting that, you know, that gets things going again. The weather's getting better. There are awesome stars on show. The betting really hits five new levels next week. It's not Chelton's fault that various horses have got injured. And when we lose stars like Constitution Hill, Marine National, and plenty others along the way, it's tough on Cheltenham, but it, it really shines a light on the fact that quite a few of those stars, Ed, weren't running much at all when they were bang healthy. And that's the problematic period, is the build-up to Cheltenham, not Cheltenham itself. And, and in terms of the betting shape of next week, I used to go to Cheltenham for three days, and I'd be delighted if I backed three or four winners. It was so hard. Now, I, and Ollie will, will be able to speak to this a bit more. There are a lot of young lads. I think they're delighted about the shape of the Cheltenham Festival. <laughs> they can go and go, well, he's got three or four bankers here, 50 quid on this, yeah. 100 quid on that. It, it really suits them. So you, you have to pick your battles. Uh, and I'm not, I think Cheltenham has a, is at a tipping point. I think it has to embrace change in various, um, various aspects now, the, the racing program, the pricing, et cetera, et cetera. It's at a tipping point. I hope it does embrace those changes. But if you're not excited at this point in the build-up to Cheltenham, then, you know, it, it, you've lost something that I still have, thankfully. It, it will be magic. It always is. Are the Irish excited? The annual pilgrimage is as normal? Because you're, you're hearing lots of stories of, of people in this country that may be doing things differently. What, what's it like back home? Yeah, look, uh, the build-up to it is always really good. Like a number of challenge previews. I've done a couple and my colleagues have done. Well, you've done about 17, man. I look for things. I lost count. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And uh, look, the appetite for the game is still very much evident. Uh, no matter where you go, full houses, people, my keen just to get a bit of a build up to the festival. And for the armchair viewer, it, it's very, very popular. But for people travelling over, there's a lot of negatives now. Sterling is quite strong at the minute in comparison to the euro. Obviously, the mission cost is um, Graham has mentioned. And Cheltenham accommodation is a big issue yeah. as well no, for anybody. Like it's, it's brutal, isn't it? Yeah. And but the jockey club is criticised for it. It's not their fault. No. What are they supposed to do? The town, the town can't meet the demand maybe of what the track needs people-wise, if you like, for people staying. So that that is a negative. I know groups of race course at the Dublin Race Festival, huge success in its own right. A lot of English people come over as well, obviously, for that. And, uh, you know, the big thing with them is the accommodation, the cost of getting over there. And people are going abroad, they're going to Tenerife, going to, to the sun, play golf, just due to cost. Maybe had, really? uh, had enough of the festival, maybe in some respects. But uh, for me, if you get the opportunity to go to Chelham two days, it's fantastic. But there is negatives, but there's a lot of positives to it too. It, it seems to me with all of this, Oli, that the important thing for me, maybe at the end of this week, is that the authorities are seen to be listening. Whether it's about the race program, whether it's about the cost, whether it's about the parking, I just think maybe at the end of the week, they say, right, we're gonna have a wash up meeting. We're gonna to listen to what people want and move forward. And maybe there is change. Do you think that's a good idea? I think it's always important to listen to ideas, no matter how silly or, or whatever they may be. The, the thing I would say aligned to what everyone was saying here is, I mean, I heard somewhere today that there's 
uh, you know, you can pay in installments to come to Cheltenham this year if you want to spread out your pay. Like buying a carpet, you can you can but get a carpet. Exactly. Like you to pay installments to go to a sporting event is utterly <laughs> ridiculous to me. Mm-hmm. And if you have, as, as GC was referring to, a group of youngsters who have to pay off their student loans, who have to, you know, they're, they're not earning much. They, you know, it's it's tough in terms of cost of living, etc. As you know at the moment, if you're asking them to go, this sport is amazing. This is our championship event. You can come, but spread your payments out over six months. Those people will go. Sod it, I'm not coming. I'm going to go and pay 40 quid to go there instead and have a day out with my mate. And you probably, I don't really know this and can't quantify it myself. I'm no, in no way a businessman, as you know, and economics was not my strong point. But you probably don't get many strikes with those people to get them back in because once they have it in their mind that Cheltenham is too pricey, they ain't going to be watching it. So I think that the message I would send to the people in power at Cheltenham is, is do listen to change it so that you can get these people through the gates because when they come to I know that they will love it you can't not when you hear that roar when always come back and you get the bug we've all got it get them in it might cost you some money short term but long term you will benefit hugely from it you feel as if we have reached a very important phase and that change some sort of change in the race program to make it more competitive is essential Kevin Blake has put out a, a, a bar storming piece the other day about how Cheltenham Festival is on the brink, compare it to a washed up Mike Tyson. Now that's a very dramatic, dramatic metaphor, but it works from a journalistic point of view. But Cheltenham have to come out swinging off the ropes mm. in a way now with some changes. But it's worrying to think that this were the firm, Ed, two years ago, who were ready to press the button on a five day festival. So whether they're prepared to say, well, we- their depends on that, they did listen, didn't they? In the end, I think they were looking for a way to make it five. <laughs> <laughs> one other thing before we move on to, to highlights, if you like, this might not be a negative. Willie Mullins' domination mm. in Ireland. Let's talk about Ireland first, the DRF. Positive or negative? Oh, look, it's um, it's a running team through the season. Obviously, once Willie gets rolling at the Christmas Leopardstown meeting, it just continues on from then on to the Dublin Race and Festival. He'd 40 odd winners in January, from what I can recall, and which is unheard of for his time of the year and uh, it obviously backed it up to Dublin Race Festival. Are you worried about that? There is changes coming in some respects. Uh, Gordon Elliott is obviously on record as saying you got to just got to go and try to match Willie Mullins every morning which is hard to do. Uh, the firepower he has, the amount of clients that Willie gets in not only with Irish owners, the amount of English owners that he's got in his stable and keen to come there and join him is quite significant. Um, the middle tier trainers I think in Ireland and probably the UK are being totally wiped out by the point to point scene. Um, they're not getting the raw materials anymore. The trainers used to go to the sales and buy five or six young horses on spec, can't compete with the market for the point to point brigade have to buy on certain credit terms, if you like, with the sales. And as a consequence, William Mullins is able to go and buy the end product and the middle tier can't buy the product at all. So that's a big swing at it. So it can get a bit repetitive Dom race festival way dominate winning all the great ones you know you'd like to see somebody else in the mix but it's where we're at now and as an Irish person next week if he is 12 winners at Cheltenham nobody will be complaining like so it's it's a double edged sword but the middle tier jumping is very very much a tight market at home at the minute Can I just jump in on that I I, I think that ultimately it will happen at Cheltenham where Willie Bonners has loads of favourites etc the, the, the problem is at source I think and I, I wrote a column about this earlier in the year if you can incentivize sporting life, was it? Uh, it? It wasn't actually, but um, maybe they'll post it after <laughs> this. Uh, the, the the problem I think comes at source, and if you can incentivize trainers with ten winners to their name, twenty winners to them, races for them, and give bonuses, etc., yeah. so that they can go into the open market with money in their back pocket and try and compete mm-hmm. with a Willie Mullins, then perhaps they can buy the horses that Willie Mullins is is buying. They can maybe get to Cheltenham in two, three years' time with those good horses rather than Willie winning all the races at a lower level with progressive horses and then getting them to Cheltenham. So I think you shouldn't focus and go, well, Willie Munners is going to dominate Cheltenham. I think if you can incentivize it for lesser known trainers at the bottom level, perhaps that is the springboard for them to get to the top. We, we have a little bit of an advantage to Ireland too with a central governing body and a programme is it controlled, if you like, from hay to rise. So next year, the grade one novice at Chris has gone, which it was awfully cracking two mile novice chase, Leperstown been the Morgana has been downgraded at Punchestown which was long overdue a very poor grade one 
uh, off in a cakewalk for a William Mullins horse. You usually have four to five runners in the race. So there is small steps in curtailing the programme coming. But there's more needs to be done to funnel everything to take each other on a bit more than what we see at present. But there's a, there is a sense of awe about it, isn't it? Mm. In, when Aidan takes mm. you know, 20 odd horses to for, for Royal Ascot or whatever, it's mm. awesome. And, and the day that you, you cannot get pleasure from brilliance, the game's up. And it's an absolutely awesome operation. And my issue, in a way, is whether punters feel that it's taking something significant away from the festival. I remember when I was young, the Dickinsons were absolutely killing it, but in steeplechases, mm. by and large. They were do this is a dominant operation in yeah. speed, stamina, chases, hurdles, bumpers, the whole lot, and some good flat horses yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, and it's sensational. The other point I would make that I think is a little underplayed, and Fran touched on something about the sourcing, trying to get the raw talent. To me in Britain, it's three trainers who were capable of getting group one, grade one horses on a regular basis. It's Nichols, it's Henderson, and it's Skelton. And it's no party if those three don't find horses. Venetia has long press, there is Crown Ball, maybe one or two others on the fringes. But you would think that even with these supply issues, those British trainers outside the top three should be finding a star here and there. And you know, there comes a point at which you think, no, no, those lads in Ireland, they're, they're just better at it. Ed will cry if you don't mention Carl Cramner now, so just, as <laughs> right. Listen to Russell, yes. <laughs> Ollie, the Gold Cup, 100th year of the great race. What kind of Gold Cup have we got? Uh, mm, that's a good question. I don't, uh, probably, I don't really know the answer. I think Shishkin makes it a, a very fast, a fascinating race with one eye on galloping the shop. But, but personally, for me, I see the Gold Cup as essentially an opportunity to, to elevate Gallop in Deschamps from a very good horse mm. into the category of a great horse. I, I, th I think it is mm. his to lose, and therefore I think this will be the crowning of a horse that we are telling our kids about, grandkids about. But it's deep though, Ollie. I mean, do you think it is? I think it's a cracking race. I really do. I think from ITV's point of view, we've got mm. fantastic stories in it, particularly Hewitt. He will be able, yeah. amazing. But it, you've got fast or slow. You've got a British challenge, a brave man's game. You've got Shishkin. You've got Long Presse. Uh, you've got Grand National National game. game, you've got the Grand you National winner, Grand Rabbit. In terms of stories or in terms of competition, I think, theory, it, every, I think it every one. Really? I, think it, I think it's the race of the week by a million miles, personally. Yeah, I do. I, I think that that's you think it's very competitive? Well, yeah, I, I think the gang's all here. All, all the other no championship races have All the other championship true, races true. have a significant non runner, Constitution Hill, uh, Energamine, uh, Alaho. Um, Thalem, that phrase yeah, yeah. time, the stay is heard. Mm. This one has them all. And I, but I agree with you on Galapan. Um, th there's a point at which that horse has the chance to elevate himself mm. from a very good to a potential great. And in the last three years, he's had a flat performance at Punchestown when Cheltenham may have left the mark. He was rusty first time out this year, Fran. For three years, he's been utterly dominant <laughs> in every other race he's contested. Exactly. You think it's going to be the crowning of Galapan? I, I tend to agree, but I do agree it's a fascinating race in its own right. I just think Galapan, when he did the Savants chase at yeah. Leopard when they turned the screw and put him on his game, he was so impressed. But isn't that a thing that they did turn the screw for that? And I don't think Martin Brassel necessarily did turn the screw with Fast or Slow. He will next Friday. Yeah, Fast or Slow, Martin Brassel, great record at Cheltenham, two horses beat the handicaps by short margin last year. Uh, won the Ballymore Hurl for his owners a uh, couple of years ago at City Island. Fantastic target trainer. Talked to him last week. You get the impression he's only beginning to peak him for this race. But Paul Townend was just adamant he was only going to win the Dublin Race Festival in the Irish Gold Cup by the minimum amount, if you like. He didn't open up the way he did in the Savage Chase. I say Gallopin has really come to himself as well. It's a fascinating race. Fast though, could well get quicker than but uh, I'm not sure three miles two would bring out the best of fast or slow. Mm. I just have a niggle about him the last furlong at Cheltenham in a gold cup. I'd love to go for Reiner. Night two would be very appealing at it with a run. But I think Gallopin, he should have won the last three festivals he, and he should make it two gold cups in a row. We don't remember much about album photo. I think we'll remember a lot more about Gallopin shops. He's eight now as well, Frank. He's in prime time now, isn't he? Yeah, he really is. He should be in his very best. Uh, and the, the way he goes through, the way they were able to switch him off last year, no, Things did not go to plan to start last year, but the way he was able to work his way through the field, that turn of foot he showed against the hill was quite remarkable. They know he gets the trip really well now. 
as Graham said, is a year older as well. So. And just to touch back on that Rollins angle, which we mentioned a few minutes ago, they have been deadly with mm. their, their grade one aces in the last <laughs> couple of years. The last two years, it's a small sample, but it's worth mentioning. William Mullins has saddled eight group one favorites at six to four or shorter. Seven of them won. Good looking, not by a half a length or a length driven out, by miles a la whole appreciating, mm. etc. And the other one was Gallop from he tipped out when he was about <laughs> was it all into the woods. Is that a missing one? Yeah. Oh, so in goodness. other words, it's effectively the last eight of yeah. six to four is shorter have not just won, they have sided it. Gosh. Right, just to finish with, I'm gonna fast forward. Hopefully the headline on, on Friday night in the newspapers on Sporting Life will be either Gallop Out makes history or mm. Cora Rambler does an amazing double. What's the headline going to be, Ollie, big picture-wise on the festival, do you think? Moving into the weekend, let's fast forward. Is it going to be positive? Is it going to be negative? What's the headline going to be, do you think? Or, or hope? Well, 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 ultimately, racing has an incredible knack of delivering good news stories when it needs it most. And I know that, as GC referred to at the start, there are champion horses that are going to be there, Constitution Hill being the headline. But there will be a performance or a moment at Cheltenham because there always is that we remember forever, whether that's Sprinter Sackler coming into the winner's enclosure. It might be Paisley Park in the stairs hurdle, but there will be a moment. Where we, you know, but we will look at each other and go, this sport has a number of flaws and there are hopefully clever people trying to work on them. But at its core, this is a sport that makes us feel things, feel things that we don't ordinarily feel, which is why we come back year after year. I hope the headline will be about a, a performance or a moment that makes us remember it forever with a sub-headline, but the sport needs to take a look at some of the yeah, I think that's that people that are experiencing. And I remember, we, do you remember a few years ago, we went, I think, this is going to be an absolute nightmare. And then Rachel Blackmore yeah, made exactly. headlines. You're, you're absolutely right. GC, what's the headline for you? Yeah, it's a slightly more uh, pragmatic uh, issue, but I think it might come to the fore. And I have a feeling that the only affordability checks that will be talked about by the end of next week is whether bookies can afford to pay out oh, because I genuinely believe that you know that the Mullins aces are going to be mighty mighty hard to beat and if a few of those gambled on handicappers like Sam Jess mm. etc if they if they don't come to the book there'll be no respite week, at all yeah it, it could be it could be big trouble for the bookies next week I think is it going to be Irish route Oh. Yeah, I think it's all there and I think they softer the ground of more in favour of the Irish trained horse given the winter which we've had and um, the way it seems to bring out the best of William Owens trained horses he been for his 100 uh, winner at Cheltenham is quite remarkable and that should happen by day two day three who knows <laughs> yeah uh, very potential, potentially and uh, day two uh, I don't have a bet in that uh, and, uh, uh, the Gold Cup has the recipe of a bit of classic when you mentioned obviously Gallup and Shams I can't get away from but when you mentioned Hewick the potential there for a great story staying loyal to Jordan Gainford is a great move I think by connections I respect him a lot for that and then he got fast to slow Martin Brazel with his record at the festival small target trainer um, yeah it's got a recipe of something that could be very very special to finish off the week right you stay sitting there thank you for the moment chaps it's Irish and the Irish team that comes next. Okay, it's time to talk all things Ireland with these three. Hand up, panel, if you've ridden a Cheltenham Festival winner. I think I'm an early round. Hand up, <laughs> This is the year, Alex. This is the year. I can do it. The press break up, one of the great confrontations. Who do you support, Britain or Ireland? I'm definitely going Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't like their shot if I didn't. I think that's sensible. I'm going to ask all of you the various different stables and the chances Ireland have got. For, let's start Willie Mullins. The best in double green for Willie Mullins is El Fabiolo. I thought that might be the answer. Yes. And what I like about him is you get so wound up, don't you, when people say he's a bit of an iffy jumper. But he's not. He's, free, he's a very, very good jumper. He nearly fell under you did when he did. I mean, to be fair, every horse nearly falls under me, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's the first issue. That's not a fact. I can dare quite a few horses. But no, he's not. He's just, he's, he's, he's a very, very, he gets from A to B. Um, and the mistake that he made with me at Leopardstown, I promise you, the majority of horses would have fallen there and he found a leg. <laughs> he just lost his concentration. Yes, exactly. That's it comes now what happened. <laughs> exactly. He just loses his concentration slightly at times. But he's getting better and better. I mean, I think he's very, very good at falling the Arca last year. He never missed a beat. So from Mullins, about Mullins from you, Billy, I want a good thing and maybe a darker one. I wouldn't have said this last week, Ed, but the good thing has to be Stateman because the champion hurdle has just completely opened up for him. 
dark one, you could pick any one of probably 10 or 12. You'd have loads of runners in all the novice races and whatever. One that I like at a price, if he runs in the Albert Bartlett, is Lecky Watson. I think he's going out for that trip. He's about 12 or 14 to 1 at the moment. Will he have three or four in the race? He'll probably have the favourite, maybe the first two or three in the betting. But Lecky Watson at a price, I, I really like him. Like it? Your uh, eyes and ears at Mullins is young for sporting life. Ballyburn, come on, tell us, where's he going? Not a clue. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right, thanks, Fran. I went on you, Dad. Fran. What's your English? Well, you must have an English. Um, after being down there last week, and uh, obviously the William Mullins Stadium Tour for the sporting life, we got to spend a couple of hours down there, and I think is everything's computing in his head, whether it's where, I think Bally Burns the banker, whether he goes into Barry and Bingham, Gallagher, and obviously is known now, of course, or the Supreme Novice, mystical power, all depends where he fits into the equation. For me, I'd like to see him go further, mystical power. I think his jumping isn't quite where it is, uh, needs to be at. For so if it was up to you, you'd go Gallagher, mystical with, power. power, Supreme Novice with Bally Burns. I bet you would see the other way around. Probably will. <laughs> now, also, the great thing is you're our eyes and ears with Frank Berry. Mm. What's he had to say? What's his good thing of the week? What's he been saying on the phone? He doesn't talk to me. <laughs> no. Um, Did he talk to his other son, Mark Walsh? He does, yes, yeah. And uh, oh, look, uh, they have a big team this year. When you go down to the race, the McManus team, I don't think he's ever had a strength and depth in all races, like uh, normally the handicaps, but in a championship race, I think fact to foil, he's definitely the banker of the week. The fact, uh, will he was almost forced to come out and nominate his target two weeks before the race as it all uh, what he did to get a quarter at Leperstown was very very take and his win at Christmas time also skipped to a generation of going hurling to go chase and he's a beautiful looking horse I'd say the best yet to come in him okay should we move on to Gordon Elliott he didn't ask me for dark horse who when he's yet go on then <laughs> <laughs> Fleur Afazil in the champion okay. bumper Fleur Afazil okay Two wins, one at Nace, ran away at Jolie Town and ran away with her in Leopardstown, could still win. She's 16 to 1 for the champion bumper. Two mares have won the champion bumper in the last 10 years. This would be another one. Excellent. Gordon Elliott, before I was rudely interrupted. It's a big week from this, isn't it? Absolutely. Really, it is, yeah. really important. Would you agree with that? Totally, yeah. The last couple of Jelkins, he's had the odd winner here and there. He hasn't had a really big winner at Jelkins for a while and he'll definitely be hoping to put that right this week. On our weekly podcast, you and I have had two quite big arguments over the last year or so. I never have arguments. <laughs> One of them's over Jerry Colomb and the other's over Corrick Rambler. Right. They're both in the Gold Cup. Yeah. How do you see that playing out? Well, uh, Jerry Colomb will finish ahead of Corrick Rambler. <laughs> but both of them will finish <laughs> well behind <laughs> Galvin de Shaw. Really? You think Galvin de Shaw's a good thing? I think so, yeah. Okay. Back to Gordon Elliott. Same question, really. A strong fancy. He hasn't got that many, I suppose, compared to the Mullins yard. Oh, he'll have a handful. Um, they'll be really awful of brighter days ahead in the Mayor's Novice Hurdle. Um, possibly his best chance is Tehupo, or however you like to pronounce it, in the stairs hurdle. He ran really well in the race last year. Maybe a little disappointing that he couldn't win it last year, but he, they've changed his campaign slightly. He hasn't run since the Hatton's race. They'll be hoping that it keeps raining at Shelton because the softer the ground, the better for him. Um, if it turns into a bit of a bog at Shelton, then I think he'd be a, a really hard horse to beat um, as it stands. He'll, he'll probably be one of Elliot's best chances. Um, of his dark horses, he'll have plenty of handicaps. Yeah. Um, I don't know if anything really stands out at, at the moment, uh, but yeah, his his handicap owners will be will be worth noting. Cross country is another race that he does really well, and so uh, expect him to have two or three live ones in that as well. And uh, unusually, the mayor's novice race mm. this year wouldn't be the most high profile races, but this year it's incredible, really high quality, and it's a real. I know Dyson Enos is fancied for the Fergal O'Brien team. Top of the market, it's a proper head to head, isn't it, between Elliot and Mullins? It is indeed, yeah, and uh, better days ahead. Uh, uh, brighter. Brighter is in. Brighter and better. Keep yeah. getting that mixed up. <laughs> uh, she's been very, very impressed to date, what she's done all the way through suggests that she's a high class filly in the make, and they've got a really uh, high opinion of her down there. And I think for me, her and Team Poor, the Gordon Elliott Bankers of the Week for him. I think they're the two big hosts from going into the rest of the week. Uh, for, as regards, she could be a potential superstar next year, second season. And obviously, Team Poor back in the stairs, Horace. So I think she, at this stage of her career, is a bit more forward than the Mullins runner who. Jay de Grugier. Jay de Grugier, who was very impressed when she won at the Sotterina at Ferry House. She went through the race and in a slow run race, she had a really good turn of foot to pick up in background and win really well. But I was down in Willie's that morning and she physically looks very immature and uh, I think whatever she does as a novice she'll be a far stronger filly next year. Her sire Dr. Dino Willie says by statement that he 
has only come to himself as a seven year old this year that he's really mature from six to seven. She could be the same as she goes through her career. So for that reason alone, I'm going to go with the Elliot runner. Okay, you Elliot O'Mullins in the Mayor's Novice I, or elsewhere? No, I prefer Jade de Grugio. Oh, I really like the way that's on. It's on. I like the way Fargo Brian has campaigned as Sardinas, so she won't have a penalty. That could be crucial. Five pounds could make a big difference. But I've been very impressed with Jade de Grugio. I love the way she's she jumps in particular. She's really quick over Ardle. And I think the drop back to two miles mightn't just suit Elliot's mare as well as this one. I think she might have too many gears for her. Daryl, in the double green next week, give us a couple of dark ones. Maybe one of the ones in the bumper, the boodles, Mr. Giff in the Sky Best Supreme. Yeah, Mr. Giff. Who are you most excited about? Well, obviously, our, our banker are hopefully going in is El Fabiola, but like you say, we've got a lot of young horses that are coming through. You're allowed two? I'm allowed two, okay. Mr. Gift did the Supreme. I love the way he went about his business and the way he won down. In the what? In the which race? Mr. Gift in the Supreme. Sky Bet <laughs> Supreme, sorry. <laughs> Sky Bet Supreme, yes. Love the way he went about his business. Uh, love the way he went about his business um, at Limerick that day under Kieran Callahan. Jumped great, travelled great, and it took him a long time to pull the horse up. Um, after the winning line so he's usually exciting and we've got two nice bumper horses I won't even try to name their names because I get that wrong and I knew like, three, two, three will absolutely abuse me so we'll meet them but you can have or, or, or I'll, give, I'll give you Jasmine DeVoe and say that chance exactly perfect lovely horses and I suppose Batman Gurek in the is, uh, boom <laughs> Sometimes you're right. Sometimes you're right. You, 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 you can trip. Man in the in the boodles. <laughs> it's just perfect. Let's do a Henry de Bromhead. This is a long day. No, already. <laughs> Let's do a Henry de Bromhead. It seems to me, Billy, every year, Mullins, 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 a little bit of Elliot. De Bromhead turns up at Cheltenham and he always seems to have a good week, doesn't he? He is outstanding the way he just produces his horses. Absolutely trained to the minute for Cheltenham. He seems to have a, a happy knack of doing it every year. And you can be sure he's a couple lined up again for this year. Go on then. What are the best of the De Bromhead horses, do you think? I think the way the Arkle is shaping up, I think Quilixius has to have a real chance now. Of course, he's a former Triumph Hurdle winner. Yeah, he jumped really well at Nace the last day. Um, he's tr certainly thrown his hat in the ring. Um, Envoy Allen will be back again in the Ryanair. Again, it doesn't look a great race. Uh, he's probably as good a horse as he was last year. Maybe that will be good enough to see him over the line. He's got a couple of really nice mares uh, later on in the week. Uh, he runs a, a very interesting mare called Lantry Lady. Mm in the mayor's hurdle now she's really inexperienced I hate her approval coming to my last I'll come to you in a second she's after winning two races at Gordon on very bad ground but she was really impressive the last day she'll need to step up quite a bit to be competitive in a mayor's hurdle but she might be capable of it and in the same colours he has a horse called Hispanic Moon who might go for the Martin Piper one of those handicap hurdles um, she won nicely at Punchstown the other day she'd have a chance as well why were you nodding at Langtry Lady? Yeah, uh, she won a, a maiden hurl in really good style last year, beating Silent Approach at Gorham Park. Uh, she went on obviously to win a grade two chase this season. She's not going to beat Lossy Math, is she? A 16 to 1 in a round, I'd be very happy to chance her. I was very, very taken with her win at Gorham Park. 11 months off the track, she travelled strongly through the race, won readily. Beautiful looking murdering. And uh, Henry said at post race, a couple of niggly problems just kept her off the track. You don't often like seeing her at Gorham Park and bottomless ground and turn around to Cheltenham that quickly, but given how little mileage she's on the clock in a race where Lossy Mount has taken up a lot of the market, there will be without betting or each way betting. I definitely have something on her. Do you want a second to wrong head? Yeah. Go on. Quick say this. <laughs> <laughs> you said that, sorry. No, I don't want him to tease you, but for no, now. Maz, Maz Khan, I think, is interesting where they go with her. Uh, obviously, being. Uh, beat uh, William Munson's mare in the race last year, the Grand Annual. I just think she's working her way back to form. Maybe they'll go for the championship, but she is back in the Grand Annual. has a couple of handicap entries. I do think there's mileage in her still. Okay. So to finish with, I want the best. Do you want two or three Irish Raiders? Mm. Two or three? Two. It's like vanilla or chocolate. Yes, okay, go three. You can have three. Yeah. Okay, for you two. Think mm. of those. You, oh, best of the double greens, El Fabiolo. Yep. Best, if you could ride one in the Gold Cup that wasn't Galifando Shaw, would you be Irish or British? Fast or slow? It's could you be Irish? I like it. Could, could, big races like that. I think consistency, it, consistency is key. Consistency and, and concentration are absolutely key. Exactly. Yeah. And um, I, I like him. And like you say, I think it's an open goal. Few horses have got questions to answer. And I think he's bomb proof. He'll turn up, he'll run his race. And... Uh, He's a great jumper. He's a great traveller. He wouldn't mind either ground, whether it's good ground or softer ground. I'd be with him if I couldn't like Gallop him. Okay. Billy, you can have three. Not all short prices, but your 
Aris. I like the way he only comes to me for one because he, he, no, he <laughs> wouldn't remember three. You wouldn't remember three. Since <laughs> asking far too much of you. <laughs> Joe, you happy with three? Yeah, we'll go for three. Here we go. Okay. So you know, let's go three, two, one. Save the best for last. Let's go three, two, one. Three, two, one. Okay. Well, in three. Ballyburn will win whichever novice hurdle he runs in. I think it'll be the Gallagher. Hopefully it'll get more exciting from here, Billy. Um, yeah, you like fact of file is the other one. Let's hope it gets more exciting from here. Gallop and Deschamps. Not very exciting yet. Billy, we know we like bankers, aren't we? The Brutals is 16 to 1. Not this year. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. Three, two, one. Let's go. Three, two, one. 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 Three, two, and Allegor de Vassi is two ways running, so... <laughs> Take you on, Dino Blair. Who wants to live with Claire's? Okay. <laughs> Come on, Ed. Don't take you on, Dino. Here we haven't done the research. Is that race on night night, no, is it? No, no, there you go. So. <laughs> it's late on Friday. I mean, it'll be in the car going home. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, three. That's three. Go two. Go two. Built by Ballymore, trained by Martin Brazel. Big gamble pulled off at Christmas. The away mean to Limerick. Uh, had good bump of form. Two runs. Hadn't been sighted. Went down to Limerick. Backed off the boards. I won a poor race in really good style. But went to Punchestown. Weak in the market. Race fell apart. Ended up winning by 12 lengths. Got a mark higher than what Martin Brazel was hoping he get a challenge. But as a consequence, he gets into the race to challenge. So it's kind of... Oh, by Sean Mulrine. Ballymore yeah. Holmes, of right. course. Just and yeah, you don't know uh, also, the, also the orders are first called fast or slow who might wipe in the knees later in the weekend uh, just keep it under your and number one is <laughs> uh, so anyway he, wherever he goes in a handicap if he goes for Carl Cup or Martin Pipe he's a really interesting horse and number one as regards to bet Teupel all in really mm. thank you chaps good luck Daryl thank you Pint, punting pointers punting pointers comes next Here we go then, mm -hmm. punting pointers with three of the best punters in the game. And GC, we just served you. Were you just filing your copy on here? Yeah, it takes me back. <laughs> I know we're, uh, we're all getting on a bit, but uh, even I've never had to file a copy on one of the old group. <laughs> right, let's talk punting. Dave, give us an insight for the Chelmer Festival. Is it different? How do you approach it? Yeah, it is different, I think, next week. Um, I think the, the main rule for me is that it's the same rule every year is um, you've got to remember next week, everything has ability. Everything's got ability. 33 and 50 pokes have got a basic level of ability. Don't be afraid to sort of scatter a few about next week on handicaps and stuff like that because even if you're backing it, a 33 to one shot, a 50 to one shot, they're going to have 130 plus. They've all got ability. It's just whether they can use it on the day. I think that's that's my golden rule next week. And with the coffee you write, Matt, do you try and treat it like any other week or is it completely different? No, it's not completely different. Dave's nailed it, I think. You have to treat these handicaps certainly the, the same as... A lot of the others. Um, I used to approach this week, it's interesting, with a real kind of like almost manic excitement when you're just really coming through the game and getting into it. Uh, and as much money as I could possibly get together. But now, obviously, you know, not only my own mouth to feed, and it's a bit more cautious <laughs> these days. And obviously, looking at these races now that um, the, 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 from a value bet point of view, um, you're relatively limited. I mean, there are some races where you're not going to get 20, 25 to one shots in the race because there aren't enough runners. Of course, you're not championship uh, Yes, very true. So I suspect today will be top of top top of the market races, won't they? A lot of these championship and grade one races. So yeah, handicaps uh, is going to be, uh, that's where the fun is for me. UGC? I'm a bit different than the other lads, Ed. I, I'm a, as a punter, I, I'm a good front runner. I'm not so good trying to play from behind. So I, I try to play quite steady away to begin with and get in front, and then I trust myself to go well through the week. There's a patch of ground about 50 yards, what used to be the law at Sheldon, it's tarmac now, um, where I stand if I really need one. If you see me there on a Thursday or Friday and I'm standing there, it's because I'm well behind and I need one to get one home. Zainar and the Triumph Hurdler, remember, that was, that was an important You're superstitious? One. Not especially, but if I'm getting well behind... Get out of the road when I want that bit of grass stroke to our back. Uh, I better have a camera on there to make sure we'll know how the weeks go. It sounds like you're a bit like a cricketer, early in his innings, feeling your way. It's to get your eye in a way. It's in race, isn't it? Yeah. You know, and, and they don't get any easier as the week goes on. Uh, if, if you look at the, the, the results, particularly on the last two days, very formful Tuesday and Wednesday last year. Yeah. Um, Thursday and Friday, some, some wild ones. So 
Um, but my my strategy is to try to get ahead and then and then play with some confidence. There, I'm sure you've all had plenty of highs and lows, Dave. I don't want to remind you of too many heartbreaks. I want a high as well. The yeah. Cheltenham festering festival memory, babe. We've just been discussing the low just before we came on. It was, was was blowing wind for me. He won. Well. Yeah, he won the wrong race that one for oh, me. He was, um, <laughs> he, I'd, I'd spotted him early when he was amateur ridden at Ascot and then he went to paid off for the for the champion hurdle trial and gave seven pounds a day to start. I only got beat to I thought, oh, this is the one, this is the one, this is the one they're lining up for Cheltenham for a handicap. And I started anti posting him. I thought, well, he definitely needs a step up in trip. So I was backing him for what I think it was the Coral Golden Hurdle in those days. I think it was the Coral Cup, but whatever they called it, the 2 4, the 2 5 race. And uh, I'd got a nice summer, tidy summer money going in to the week and then send down the entries come out there's blowing wind ah it's like the game for the door and no sooner he won the imperial than marty bike came out and said yeah we'll be uh, going for the county oh. next week and it's like and i'm just looking at these dockets thinking you know in the bin they go that was that was the life because 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 pine said unsinkable boxer was the biggest certainty ever but blowing wind wasn't far behind that it really wasn't no no it really wasn't it's just one of those you know, right, right horse, run race. Should we start with heartbreak then? That, so that is a heartbreak. Yeah. Have you got a heartbreak? Plenty of heartbreak, yeah. Um, the heart was involved as well. I nearly got skinned by my wife in 2015. It was the first time I've been there with uh, Mrs. B. Uh, and by your wife, was, I've been backing the package all winter for the William Hill Trophy, the ultimate. Donald Johnson, was it? Yeah, yeah. I loved those colours. Yeah. Um, some really great memories of those horses over the years. I've been backing them all winter and I was... Feeling pretty um, pleased with myself. He was about nine to two favourite on the day. Here we go. Came with a winning run and he got nailed on the line by 33 to one shot. And veteran Chief Dan George, you probably remember Dave. Not only that, but uh, it was later announced, obviously, that uh, Chief Dan George was trained in Cartmel and my wife is from there and went to school there. And I hadn't informed her that the Moffat had a runner. So she would inevitably back that horse so uh, yeah that was a that was a very painful one for me financially and um at um i just sensed you see you might have a few heartbreakers yeah <laughs> where'd you start <laughs> i remember uh, there's a horse called cool Tell star no uh, heard of it. I, I backed him anti-post at the arco had a good bet on him better prices than sb he went off favorite and i fancied one the strong saver called dempsey and Corto fell at the third and brought Dempsey down. Oh, but, yeah, yeah. but also, um, in, in terms of financial turnarounds, I had a really good bet. Oh, I was caught. He was doggy, but he was so talented. Farsal for the Triumph Hurdle. Yeah. Big, big prize, 25 to 1. Nicky Richards' horse. Just got beat by Penzance, I think. Robert Thornton. Win only. And I, I kicked myself all the way home. And another one, another Nicky Richards' horse thing. Molly's Garden. So he's second in the article to Voiperous Dedes, I think. So two Nicky Richards' horses that I, I, I backed for for plenty of money and both came up just short. The high though, there must be plenty of them too. Highs, yeah, a few play spots, which are, you know, by the way, but it's, you know, the oh, good yeah. payoffs on play spots. The high in terms of financial, not the biggest, but in terms of one I remember, it's going way back. The Sinkers Gold Cup, Dave will remember it. I did. 89, yeah. I went on a bus with a load of mates, football mates and what have you, and they all wanted to know what's going to win the Gold Cup. And I fancied the thinker and the more it rained and sleeted and snowed, the more I fancied the thinker. I remember by the time they delayed it because of the stalls at all. Right. By the time the horses were in the paddock, it still looked really ropey, and we'd all had a few by then. And all the lads were shouting, "What's this jockey's name? What's it?" And Ridley Lamb, the late Ridley Lamb. Go on, Ridley. They all shouted at Ridley Lamb as he went round the paddock. They'd never seen him before. <laughs> it won. So we had a fantastic day. We had a real good pickup on that one. Dave, I think in um, recent times, um, Lizna Garoska. I had a few quid on on the day. What price you get? I, um, I think I took 33 in the morning. Though. Thank God for Bog. Um, I, I, it was just, I, 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 that year, we were sort of talking about this earlier, I think that year of the, the stairs, I just looked at it and thought it was how open it was. As it is, I think this year, I think we might get another, I could see another big price one in the stairs this year. I really could. It's that sort of a race where there's so many, if they run their race on the day, I've got a chance at a, at a big price. It's one of those races. So I think there's no goal. Oscar, last year, third wind. On the day, um, looked right. really well in the journey, but only on paddock looks. I have to say, I don't know on that. Was I was over there, <laughs> but it looked superb, my shoe. Go on, then. You yeah, I, th I think with GC as well. Like for me, it's that shared experience thing, isn't it? Look, Cheltenham's a big party for everyone to get involved in, and the ones that have really meant most to me are ones where a few mates have got involved as well. The likes of Captain Chris and the Arca. We were back in uh, through the winter anti post. It was touch and go which race he was going to run in whether he was going to run over a little bit further that was a very satisfying one and 
Alderwood as well. He ended up going off pretty short on the day and he, he was a very satisfying one. It was one that a, a lot of people enjoyed. Uh, also, um, that produced one of the greatest festival photos of all time as well with Nicky Henderson sort of said He got caught up in the winner's, uh, winner's enclosure afterwards because it was um, trained by Mull uh, Tony Mullins, wasn't it? Alderwood? And uh, Nicky Henderson obviously like got shuffled along, was congratulating JP McManus, and there's this brilliant p hen uh, picture of Henderson's sort of. <laughs> he's obviously <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, days, yeah. They, they think that he's the yeah. trainer. It's yeah. absolutely <laughs> majestic. It's super. With McCoy riding that was. Um, we always used to go in, in Champions League week. You'd always go to Cheltenham. We were all on Jeff Stelling, everybody on Xenophon, who didn't get much of a mention. Yeah. And then the commentator Mark Johnson him up. here on the wide outside. Here comes Xenophon. The roar was ah, oh, it was magic. Which races are, are getting the pulse going for next week, Dave? Uh, what are you most excited about? I, I, the champion chase is starting to intrigue me, if only for the tactics next week as to what's going to happen. Is the tactics going forward, out. though, with Edward Stone going forward? It, well, this is what we've sort of said. I mean, he should go forward. If he, you know, he, he, it should now be a straightforward, he goes forward. But, you know, with Alan King sort of saying, is that going to compromise his chance? Are we setting it up for the others when he can't? I don't think you can worry about that. You've got to do what's best for your horse and what's best for Edward Stone is him going off in front. And then I, then I think it becomes a really interesting interesting contest. It, it, you know, we know neither John Bond nor El Fabiello to a point a, a foot perfect. You can, you know, listen, if, um, with all due respect, if Elixir and Nuts can get John Bond at it, I'm sure Edward Stone can. Mm. So I think it's a really interesting race next week, the, the Champion Chase, shaping up to be one of the more interesting grade ones, if you like. I think it's it's a bit more open than the market. Which a few weeks ago it didn't look like. No, but is it one of the handicaps for you? Uh, they, they would get me excited from a punter point of view. From a purist point of view, I'm looking forward to the Mayor's Novice Hurdle. That looks like a good <laughs> clash. Brighter days ahead, Jody Gruzzi, and obviously Dice Inos for uh, Fergal O'Brien. And that, you know, you're not going to get many runners in the uh, Brian Advisory, but that clash between Stay Away Fay, Fat File might be a little bit closer than the market suggests. For you? I'm fascinated by what Dave said about the champion chase, and I hope it is bombs away on Edward Stone, because I think that sets up for Captain Guinness to run a really good race at a big price. Mm. But in terms of the quality and the event and the spectacle and the, the star power, the Gold Cup is the race, the one championship race where the gang's all here. I don't think there's a big name missing. No. There's a big name no. missing from all the other championship races. And Gallop and Deschamps, some people are out to get him. I don't really see it. Yes, he was flat at Punchestown last spring and he was rusty first time this year. But for three years, other than that, since he bolted up in the Martin Pipe in 2021, that horse has been absolutely dominant in every race that he's contested. So he sets the bar really high for faster, slow and she's getting company. It's so good. 100th year of the Gold Cup and they've got a proper, proper Gold Cup this year. What I want from you to finish are your three best of the week. We'll go along number three, down to your best at number one, okay, Dave? You're, you're going to be first into bat. I've got a list of about ten here, but you're, I'm only letting you have three. Oh, come on. We've got time. Do you want me to do mine first? Well, I think like, no, so in third, in third place, like we have... Okay, the theatre man. Theatre man, okay. I think... I plate. Think, yeah, I think it's really interesting for the plate. Um, I did catch out of Richard Bandy last week at Western, and definitely goes plate. Unless it's good, and it won't be good. So we'll go for the plate. I think, you know, that time form handicap keeps throwing up winners year after year, it's always a hot handicap. I think he's very interesting. Whether he gets in or not, I don't know, but if he does not watch for it and you talk to at the weekend, Lord Snooty in... <laughs> what are you asking for? <laughs> That's good. Oh, oh, this is so Dave Massey, it's brilliant. <laughs> but I, mean, I don't want your number two yet. I don't want, your, I don't want number three. All right, so number three, okay. No, so number three. Number. And Tim Sider, I think, has just yeah. got over Pylon's defeat. So you see who's going to just get all the pile? <laughs> <laughs> not so I don't know where. Punted by... He hasn't had much luck that owner. Number three, Graham Cunningham. Your turn. Three for me. I'm going to go a little left field. I honestly think that the superstars in the, in the big grade ones, I think they'll deliver. I really do. But nobody is really wanting to be tipped either money or odds on shots. So I'll go uh, outside the box without El Fabiolo, Captain Guinness. He's likely to be eight to one or bigger without the favourite, I hope. And I think, he can, I think he can definitely run a big race. Uh, I'm going to go... And this is a real feel thing rather than a form thing. Um, tell her the name in the first race. This isn't number two, is it? Uh, this is number two. I'm going back for you two. We're going three. Oh, you made, you We're going three. Right. By the way, in the previous section, I asked for three from Billy Nash oh. with bated breath. He went Ballyburn, yeah. Vatal File, Galapando Shaw. 
<laughs> never heard of any of those three. <laughs> Your number three this is. format is clear as day, is it? Yeah, number three. Well, they, they both mess yeah, in the moment. I'll be short and sweet. In the boodles, I'm on the lookout for this uh, Brazil host, Jose Partia. Um, Martin Brazil trainer the, for the Mulrines. They've had, they've come very close, obviously, with uh, Fast or Slow and Epic Song in the last couple of um, Coral Cups. And I think uh, this has been. Uh, Did you get some of the 25s and 33s? Uh, sure it's an hour. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit short now. I think he's yeah. still fair value. I think he's, yeah. he's got, he, he's one of these, he, they've been teaching to settle. I think that's probably the fair thing to say. Oh, yeah. Well handicapped. What we're going to do next is do number two, don't we? <laughs> okay. You've given us a, 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 a little bit of a teaser more. I'm surprised to hear you. <laughs> number two. <laughs> we'll get Dave Alder in this game. It's going to be Lord Snooty. Really? How about that? Lord Snooty for the Potemps. If he gets in, as I say, if he doesn't, there's a race that you touched on the Saturday for him that's worth a lot of my £100,000 race, I think, at the weekend. But I think he's one that I've been, he's, he's been on my radar pretty much all season for the Potemps. They tried to get him qualify for it at Christmas because there were some pretty weak qualifiers and there was an eight runner one at Wing Canton that he got back in favouritism for all around badly for no great reason but he was much more likely at ADOC last time he'd have picked up Cuthbert Dibbling in another couple of strides I think he just got outpaced on the turn a real strong run race like that on soft ground is just what Lord Snooty wants and I think there's still a big handicap love it in brackets this week just in case he's this year's blowing wind now you're yeah. number two. I wonder what that could be. Our skillful editors are earning their money today. <laughs> uh, it's an absolute speculator of this, but I think people are looking for yeah, absolutely you know, big prices. Tell her the name is a, is is a horse who's won a couple of novice hurdles at one to four and two to nine and what have you, and bombed out with my money on him or boxing me at Aintree when he tried Grade One company. But I'm going to give him a pass on that. Something about Pauling's approach to this horse. He thinks he's really really good. I know he's fast. He's got a high cruising speed, and I think you know he can be the best of the British. and might not be saying a right lot, but and hit the board at a price in the Supreme Novices. That's his target. So number two, tell her the name. Day okay. one, race one, cut. Love it. Just so it could dry up for the horse as well, because he's he, he's always said the better the ground, the better the chance. So we'll we'll see. We're on number two. Two. Number one comes next. Does it? Yeah. Definitely saving number one um, because this is one that's just sort of crept onto the radar a little bit later. I know some people have had horses in mind for weeks on end, but the Ryanair Chase, I, I do like stage star, but I think him and Bambridge are opposable towards the top of the market. And I'm I'm drawn to Field Door. Gordon Elliott's certainly making some positive noises about him. He's obviously changed hands as part of the Coldwell construction. He was placed behind Lossy Mouth, wasn't he, at the festival? And then we last saw him finishing second to El Fabiola, beating eight, nine lengths uh, in the hilly way. Put away. I think he does want the longer distance. It's a little bit chancy on that, but he's got good form over two and a half as a hurdler as well. And I think he beat uh, Sharjah last year as well. That was a good piece of form. So I think on his day, uh, Fieldor is really capable. And he's only a six year old. So I think there's plenty of improvement to come from him. So he might be the value bet in the Ryanair chase. Excellent. Now I'm looking forward to this. Mm -hmm. In first place. The one you're most excited about. Ian. And car up Rambler each way in the Gold Cup. Love it. I think. Love it. I think on the day. I, I think the, of the grade ones, that's going to be the one where we get a lot of runners actually the Gold Cup. I think Graham's saying no one's missing and no one will miss. And you could end up with 13, 14 runners, I think, on the day. And with that, you know, bookmakers are going to want your money. They'll be paying the extra place. Maybe even a couple of extra places, shall we say. And if that's the case... You ain't going to kick Correct Rambler out of the four or the five. You're going to be staying on all day, every day. It was suggested to me last week at Newbury oh, by, by one of the owners of one of the leading contenders. Oh, it's just handicap form. And I just said, Welsh National. You know, how many times has the Welsh National over the years proved a good point? And that's just handicap form. This is even better handicap form, I think. I think Correct Rambler, each way, Gold Cup, that'll do me. If he's in the mix at the bottom of the hill, he's there. He's there. Come on then. The Graham Cunningham, yeah. number one. This is. It's a bit vague and speculative, nebulous. I like, don't know which it's race this horse is. Very unlike you to be remotely wishy-washy. All these, all these races are still to be to, to clarify. Mm -hmm. I think Grade Dawning is a genuine Grade One horse. I really do. I think he's got two. But he's going to turn us. I mean, that's I think, nailed on it. I hope so. I hope so because he's in the money in the market for the for the um, Brown Advisory Chase as well. But I expect him to go. For the Turner's chase, he has Genie's Destiny to be. You wouldn't believe how fat that horse was when he first joined <laughs> Paul Nichols. 
got great awning, gave him three pound and was very unlucky not to beat him at Cheltenham before Christmas. He was very smooth in a good race round Warwick last time. Don't know what Fasal Vega's going to do. Scared stiff of Gaelic Warrior if he turns up. But I think Grey Dawning is a, is a grey one chaser in the making. And he's got a bit of uh, swag about him, hasn't he? A, a really good looking grey horse who jumps extravagantly. I think he could be a horse who, who, who shows a bit of stardust next week. Fabulous. And finally. Nap is in the Coral Cup, Ed. Nice to you, uh, Really strong fancy for First Street. Um, Nicky Henderson Toss, who's been kind of pot hunting a little bit. They tried him over fences, hated it. He had one run over in a novice chase earlier this season, hated it, ran behind, uh, lost him out, ran behind Constitution Hill, obviously in the uh, Christmas hurdle as well. But just a well handicapped horse. I think he's wanting that step up in distance as well. Now, if you actually go back to his novice days, he, he's got winning form at two and a half miles. I don't think the trip is going to be an issue at all. Um, he's actually won the Jerry Field at Newbury off a higher mark than his current mark. Uh, he was obviously second in the county hurdle a couple of years ago to State Man. He's only a pound pound or two higher than that now. Um, yeah, I think he's. He reminds me a lot of Whisper. He was a, another high for me uh, back in the day in Coral Cup for Henderson. And he, he's got that sort of profile. I really like him. That hard knocking sort of handicap form at the festival. You'd like to see Henderson's Tuesday runners yeah. go well. I yeah, it can happen. It, uh, you know. The, that's a really good point in terms of punting pointers for the week is to be agile, isn't it? You know, you you see how those horses yeah. are running on a Tuesday. If they're running like drains, then I'm going to have my stake. But yeah, I think if, a couple of promising runs from Henderson horses will tee us up hopefully for the uh, for the Wednesday. Good luck, chaps. That was a punting pointers. Bankers next. It's time for the finale, folks. It's bankers and blowouts time. Who better to bring to the party than DJ, what do you want to do first? I think we'll just go with the bankers. Let's go bankers. You go first. What's the banker of the week? Well, it's got to be Grey Dawning, hasn't it? Got to be. Um, really keen on him uh, turning up in the staying race. Hope that uh, that's where Dan Skelton goes. I'm not sure he will. Well, it's the... I can see why he doesn't want to take on uh, the favourites. It's a bit of a concern and you can see why the Turners might be perceived to be an easier race, but he just looked so good at Warwick. And I think what was key was that stepping up in trip to three miles and granted a well-run race, which he should get at Cheltenham. I think he's going to set a really good standard and, um, you know, the Mullins hot pot that looked so good at the DRF is going to have to be as good as he looked there, I think. Now you do the Sporting Life podcast with me and Billy Nash. Mm -hmm. After the Betfair chase, I put up Corrig Rambler, the Gold Cup. Billy Nash, Dave goes, absolutely no chance. Please tell me Corrig Rambler is your banker of the entire week. He's not my banker of the entire week. However, I'm yeah. very keen on Corrig Rambler. My banker of the entire week is going to be brighter days ahead in the Mayor's Novice. I think not only does her form, I think it stacks up better than that of the of Dysart Enos's. Um, what about Jade Brugge? Because the Mullins well, take a lot the, of... Yeah, I know they're keen, but I'm, the way that Gordon's talking brighter days ahead, on, on every opportunity he gets, he talks about her. I think she's very much the apple of his eye, and he's, he, he, she could be the next apples. Jade, oh. maybe that's a design. Maybe I thought Jade de Gruzzi might be the next honeysuckle. And I had a match fair with you last year and lost, so I'm not going to do it again. She did. I'm going to side fall you. into that trap again. <laughs> <laughs> Billy, it's also a disaster because I was going to put up Jade de Gruzzi as banker of the week. Oh, but anyway, oh yeah, <laughs> you can. Oh no, no, you can tell us this Billy. No, that's okay. I think obviously we don't know what way Willie is going to where who's going to run where, but. I think if Mystical Power runs in the Supreme first race on Tuesday, I think he'll win. I think he's, yes, he needs to improve, but I've been really impressed with him his last two runs. His turn, he has a real potent turn of foot. Um, I think Tully Hill, much as I like that also, I think he'll run in this race rather than Ballyburn. I think Tully Hill's jumping is maybe not quite quick enough for a two-mile hurdle, but I think Mystical Power is just improving all the time. He apparently doesn't work great at home. That's why he's been... Maybe not talked up as much as the others, but he really turns it on the track. And I think whatever beats Mystical Power will win the Supreme. That's your banker. I had a, a bet in the green room with our esteemed boss, Dave Orr, that your blowout would be British. Funny you, know, you, might, you might say that, British. Funny you might say that. Oh, for goodness sake. Um, if I'm, yeah, the one I'd like to take on is Sergino. <laughs> you know, blowout wouldn't be one of the Irish. Yeah, yeah, I'd say. I think it has to be Sergino on the Triumph. Please. Partly because of the, the Henderson form at the moment. Could you back Henderson Arse with much confidence at the moment? Certainly I couldn't. Look, Sergino has looked really, really good in his two starts. He, he looked excellent at Cheltenham. But he's going to be a ridiculously short price. It'll probably be a big Triumph. Willie's going to have, he's going to throw a whole lot at it. Um, 
Triumph can be messy. It wouldn't. He wouldn't be the first short priced horse to get beaten in a Triumph. And look, we don't know a lot about these horses, so I'd be willing to take him on as a, a really short. Oh, how you're wrong. I'll be in tears on ITV if Sagina gets beat. I'll be at absolute pieces. He's an aeroplane. I hope. You can see another side bet going there, TJ. Well, taking on these Willie Mullins real short prices sounds like um, not the smartest of the strategies, but it's lossy mouth for me. Uh, I just don't think that... Uh, in which race again is it? In the, in the mares. Yeah. In the mares race, yeah. She should be running in the champion hurdle. And one of the reasons that she shouldn't be there is because I think two miles is what her best trip is. And the extended or just short of the two and a half miles, I think that's going to be a bit of a question mark for her. She's always looked so speedy hasn't she and uh, I think she can crap the form of uh, what she did in the international it, it wasn't a strong race it certainly wasn't strongly run and uh, I think there's two or three in there that you could uh, think could run a good race against her and worst case scenario is if you take her on each way you're at least on the right side of the mathematically each way bet as well and this is hopefully the one week where you won't get your account shut for a filthy <laughs> each way bet <laughs> that's a whole other issue <laughs> Dave you blow out um, I'm going to add the price I have to take on Gallup and Deshaun, I'm afraid. I uh, know it's, it's, as you, Dave's pointed out, taking a look at Billy's face. Billy, please. <laughs> Billy, give me a chance. Um, but you've got, you've got to take on at the, at the price. It's been, it's been noticeably weak actually on the exchange over the last sort of few days, drifting out a little bit. We know it's in his armory to run flat. And he, as we pointed out before, this is going to be the great one where there's going to be 13, 14 runners. Things can happen. Things can happen in these races. Uh, that's six to four. Well, uh, near sort of eleven to ten now. Really, I think I've got to, I've got to be against. There are there's credible competition in there, and that's that's enough for me to take take him on. Love it. Good blowouts. Hope you've enjoyed the preview. There will be a stack of content on Sporting Life during the Cheltenham Festival. <laughs>